Hello friends. Welcome back. My name's Ramon. How are you today? Many, many moons ago, I came out with a video with fellow content creator, TikTok superstar, Sarah Palmira, where we talked about our most overhyped and most underhyped opinion on makeup products as former Sephora employees. And I told y'all to hit the subscribe button, notification bell on both of our channel, because we would be coming around and doing our skincare version of the video as well. And here we are talking about our most overhyped and underhyped skincare products as former Sephora employees. But before we get into the video, I'm going to ask that you hit the subscribe button, notification bell, so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, and fancy related content on my channel. Give this video a thumbs up. And in the comment section, am I talking about any of your favorite or least favorite products? And tell me about your opinion on the most overhyped and underhyped Sephora products as well. Sound off. So we're just gonna get into it. I'm gonna talk about what I think are the most overhyped skincare products and why from Sephora. And then we're gonna get into what I think are the most underhyped products that deserve a lot more accolade and why I love them so much. Number one, most overhyped product in my opinion, the Clinique Clarifying Lotions. And this goes back to a lot of the Clinique lotions, which basically equate to their version of toners. Clinique in my mind is a very old school brand that dates back into the 80s, 70s, I don't actually know. And there is association with Clinique that's just been around for so long that it's a very esteemed brand. And so people come in and because they know the brand because they've been told about the brand. It's something they beeline it for. That being said, these lotions represent a very antiquated skincare concept to me. What they come out to being is basically a tonic or what old school toners used to be. They're very astringent. They're not the most nourishing and hydrating things. They're meant to rebalance the skin, but more so act as a follow-up step to cleansing, but still remain in that cleansing phase, getting everything off that your cleanser didn't because in my opinion, back then when these are really big, the cleansing technology back then wasn't what it is today. So these are just really astringent. They're not the most nourishing and hydrating. They, in my opinion, do a lot more damage than good. Looking at the clarifying lotions, there's four types intended for each individual skin type. And all of them, all of them have denatured alcohol, which is not a bad ingredient, but they also have witch hazel and they all have salicylic acid. And that's great if you're me and you have oily acne prone skin. And I would even say if you have more normal to combo skin, they're not the worst thing, but for dry and sensitive skin, I would not necessarily recommend those options. And there's just not enough of the nourishing hydrating ingredients in those products to justify using it for a drier sensitive skin. And more so kind of on a tangent, but similar thing, they also have like a twice a day exfoliating lotion as well, which you should never ever need to exfoliate twice a day. And I do understand that product. But anyways, yeah, really overhyped products because they're just so old school and there's a lot of association around them. Second most overhyped product is pretty much anything from Tatcha, but specifically their water cream and their dewy mists. With Tatcha, I really see it as kind of like the lights are on, but no one's home. The outside is so pretty, but there's no substance to it. They're very simple formulations in my mind. They didn't reinvent the wheel with their products. They're a really nice moisturizer, very simple. A really good cleanser, very simple. The Dewy Mist is a nice hydrating mist, but it doesn't do anything spectacular. But for the price points, you'd expect a lot more. The packaging is really nice, it's very luxe. The experience overall feels really fun, but it just doesn't justify the price point in my opinion. There's a lot better options for much better price points in my opinion. Also, their sheet mask is shit. It didn't do anything for me. It was the most dry sheet mask experience I've ever experienced. Third most overhype, Sunday Riley Good Jeans. Here's the deal. I stand Sunday Riley the house down. I love their products. There's so many products that come up really frequently when I talk about my favorite skincare products, period. Their Good Jeans is basically their AHA exfoliating product. It's like a gel serum kind of texture. And it retails generally for the large size, I think above $100. There's no need, there's no reason an exfoliating product in AHA should be $100. Again, just like with Tatcha, Sunday Riley didn't necessarily reinvent the wheel with this product. I like this product a lot, actually. I think it's a great product. I've also done the Good Jeans Plus Ceramic Slip, like 10 minute facial situation. Love that. But it's just like, for what this product is, you, there, you, there's no point in it being what it is. You can find a lot of really great AHA-based products that are also really hydrating or that do what this product does at a third, a fourth, a fifth of the price. There's no need for it to be too expensive. Fourth most overhyped product, and it's something I've talked about incessantly in like the last month, it feels like, and that's Supergoop sunscreen, creams, and lotions. There's no reason for Supergoop to be that expensive, just because to me, they don't do anything really innovative with their sunscreen formulations. They're really nice, they're really elegant, they're not bad products but you're also paying like 30 plus dollars for like 40-ish mil. One thing I really don't like about Supergoop is the fact that they don't properly educate on sunscreen application, the proper way to get the most out of their sunscreens. I feel like they just really wanna sell you on layering up a bunch of their products so that you're left with no choice but to spend 200 plus dollars on buying an SPF serum, an SPF moisturizer, an SPF, an SPF primer, a CC cream, and layering all those up. And they're not telling you you need to use a specific amount. So the idea is ideally if you layer up these four to five products, 
after spending X amount of money, you might eventually end up with the SPF on one of them. For me, Super Goob is just such a hyped up brand right now. They're really, to me, the drunk elephant of sunscreen brands in Sephora, so. And the last overhyped product from Sephora, in my opinion, is It Cosmetic CC Creams. I like a good CC BB cream situation, although I'm also of the fond belief that skincare and cosmetics, color cosmetics, should kind of be a separate concept altogether. I just don't feel like you should really rely on your color cosmetics to give you so many of your skincare benefits in your routine. You can get a lot of really simplified products in skincare care that gives you a lot of benefits and then just go on top of the foundation. What I don't like about the It Cosmetics CC creams through the 70 iterations they've released is that first and foremost, they're not the most inclusive. The shade ranges are very limited. I've color matched or attempted to color match so many darker skin clients. And I'm not even talking like deep skin clients. I'm just talking like high Fenty 300s plus and the CC creams just look so gray and so ashy and so gross on them. The deeper shade ranges just don't work. And on top of that, again, I think it comes back to my issue with like the super group situation. People rely on these products to give them their sense screen and all of these other skincare benefits, but it's like, if you're not using the product correctly, you're not really getting those benefits. I will attest to the fact that these look amazing on the skin, but I think fundamentally they should just stay as like a pigment like BB cream situation that doesn't really focus on the skincare and you should really just get your skincare benefits from actual real skincare. Now let's get to the products I think are really underhyped and definitely deserve a lot more praise. First and foremost, Carez Greek Yogurt Moisturizer. I know Rob just Carez as a brand. To me, Carez is the slept on clean beauty brand at Sephora and I'm not really sure right now. I feel like there's a lot less focus on them more so than when I was there and I hope that doesn't mean they're getting phased out. But so much about Carez is so right that I feel like they deserve a lot of the accolades that the clean brands like you to the people and drunk elephant receive. The products are not accessible accessible, but they're definitely a lot more accessible than brands like Drunk Elephant. They're just really clean. They're very ethical. I like the products. They're very inclusive. They're very sensitive skin friendly. They're very just straight to the point products for the most part. They're also very, very luxe. They're very effective. And I feel like overall, Carez is just a really great brand that people don't really consider, even though it does live very nicely in that scope and that niche of clean beauty at Sephora. My second most underrated product is going to be the Sunday Rally Saturn Sulfur Treatment Mask. And I talk about this product incessantly on my channel. And the reason I think it's really underrated and should get a lot more hype is the fact that it's a very gentle acne focused product. When it comes to treating acne, I feel like the focus always goes towards BHAs, which they're a good preventative step, but when you have active breakouts, you're not really gonna do a lot in that regard. And then on the other hand, you have benzoyl peroxide, which there's actually not a lot of benzoyl peroxide based products at Sephora. But when you have active breakouts, when you have cystic acne and you have things you wanna treat like that, you really want to target the bacteria. And that's why benzoyl peroxide is generally a really good option. That being said, benzoyl peroxide can be a little bit strong, can be kind of severe, for some skin types, some people, and therefore you want a more gentle but effective alternative. And that's where sulfur comes in. When I was working at Sephora, I was at the point where I was really starting to get my breakouts and my acne under control. And Sunday Riley came through, but specifically this product. I used to use this as a treatment mask over some of my more problematic areas, but also as a specific spot treatment when I had active breakouts to really bring down the inflammation and get rid of my breakouts. Besides just the sulfur, there's a lot of really great anti-inflammatory and acne-focused ingredients to really just get your skin in check. And I believe this is one of the more affordable products in Sunday Riley's lineup. Third most underrated product at Sephora is the Dr. Jart Sycopare Tiger Grass Gel Cream. I love Dr. Jart. They're my intro to K-Beauty, and this is a product that years and years later, I still always come back to. The Sycopare line of Sephora is focused specifically around Tiger Grass, AKA Centella Asiatica, which is one of my all-time favorite skincare ingredients, just because it's a really great anti-inflammatory ingredient, great for repairing and strengthening the skin barrier. It's a really great antioxidant ingredient. And this product specifically takes the benefits of the Tiger Grass while giving you a really lightweight gel cream moisturizer that's gonna be really great for repairing and strengthening your moisture barrier. And this is a really great product if you have really compromised skin, very dry skin, very irritated and inflamed skin, you have active breakouts. It's a very versatile product. It's not the cheapest. A little bit goes a long way, but this product is always just one I come to, especially when I over exfoliate, I have breakouts, my skin's just going through it because I know it'll get my skin in check. It just has a lot of anti-inflammatory ingredients to really just calm and soothe your skin and get everything in check for you. Fourth most underrated is the Bosha Cleansing Oil. I, did, I feel for a while now, at least for the last few years, the focus with first cleanses has been around cleansing bombs. You have the Clinique one, you have the one from Pharmacy, and I feel I feel like that's the focus because they're very convenient. And there's been a little bit of drifting away from cleansing oils. When it comes to cleansing oils though, I feel like this is the one at Sephora that deserves a lot more accolades and is really slept on. It's a really nice sensory experience. It's a really nice, nourishing, very creamy first cleanse oil. It works into the skin really nice. It smells and feels really good. And I feel it's a really great steal for the price point that you're getting it at. You don't need a lot of the product to really melt off the day, the makeup, the sunscreen, everything off your face. And it's one of those things where I wish more people knew about it. It was one of the first cleansing oils I ever 
never used. I feature it on this channel a lot. Bosha as a brand has a lot of really great staples that oftentimes get overlooked. And then my last most underrated skincare product at Sephora, and this is actually one of the, I think the first higher end skincare products I ever purchased and I purchased for a very long time. Now see, First Aid Beauty Ultra Radiant Facial Pads. And basically what those are, there's these little pads, you get 60 in a little container of them that have lactic and glycolic acid in them. First Aid Beauty is generally intended for very, very sensitive skin types. And so it was very shocking when they had these pads. I remember I was dealing with my acne and I had all these breakouts and I just couldn't find products that really helped to prevent further breakouts from happening. And I went in one day to Sephora, they're like, try these. And then the sales associate like leaned in, she was like, here's a pro tip, cut them in half, they'll last you a long time. And it's $36 for the 60 pack, but cut them in half, you have 120. And if you use them every day or even every other day, those are gonna last you a long time. But honestly, it was after using this and really incorporating gentle everyday exfoliation into my routine, I got a lot of my skin issues in check. It's one of those things where it's such a slept on secret, in my opinion. I would use this all the time on clients when they would come in for makeovers as one of their first skincare prep steps. And it just did such a good job of starting to prep the skin, slough off any excess dead skin, because a lot of people actually don't exfoliate regularly. They're kind of afraid of it. And really starting to get a really nice, smooth canvas to the point where people would look at themselves and be like, my skin looks so good. What is this? And I sold a bunch of these things. First Aid Beauty, Ultra Radiance Pads, slept on secret, especially if you have more sensitive skin and you want to incorporate some daily exfoliation into your routine. And with that, those are my most overhyped and underhyped skincare products as a former Sephora employee. Again, make sure you go check out Sarah's channel. I have it linked down in the description box. Go follow her on Instagram and TikTok especially. And with that, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and notification bell so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, and fancy related content on my channel. Down below in the comments, again, tell me, are any of these your favorite or least favorite skincare products? What are some of your most overhyped or underhyped skincare products in your opinion? Sound off and thank you guys for watching.